From studio number four, this is the Space Dog on Space Dog Radio. This month's featured artist has done 10 albums, spent 10 months on Seattle's top 40 list, made number two on Australian charts, spent six months on Ireland's top 40, and is currently on the Great Coal Train Tour. Please welcome this month's featured artist, Dana Lyons. Dana Lyons on the phone with us right now. Thank you for talking to Space Dog Radio. Doing great, doing great. Thanks a lot. I know you are, your your schedule is crazy, and if I had a helicopter, I'd be able to catch up to you a lot sooner. So <laughs> I'm glad we could talk. A little bit of background for our listeners. Um, <laughs> you've got a great a great list of albums here, and your covers are are as entertaining as the songs are. Uh, one of them that cracks me up is "Ride the Lawn." You're uh, you're riding a lawnmower like you're a cowboy with your hat up in the air, but you're riding a John Deere. <laughs> you you fought the lawn and lawn one is one of your shirts, right? Well, that's what the T-shirt says. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Hey, um, it, it 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 a lot of this got started for you with the song and the album "Cows with Guns." Yes. "Cows with Guns," a hilarious song, was number one on the Doctor Demento show. Um, tell us a little bit about the whole thing behind "Cows with Guns." But I, I basically I dreamt that song. I believe I may have been visited by the great Cosmic Cow herself. <laughs> we will fight for bovine freedom and hold our large heads high. We will run free with the buffalo or die. Cows with guns. It is a hilarious song. We're going to be playing that on Space Dog Radio for sure. Um, uh, you also do some other uh, interesting projects. For instance, you did uh, an album called All Night They Howl at the Moon, and it's uh, environmental songs for kids. Yes, I love that little album. Uh, it's mostly recorded live at Camp Orkaila on Orcas Island here in Washington State. And... Uh, the kids' energy, they just go wild on it. I, there were like 13 different cabins just totally amped up, and they were singing and cheering so loud, I kept forgetting the words when we recorded it. So by the time I finally got the words right, they knew the words too, so they're all <laughs> singing along. So yeah, it's, it's a beautiful little album. It's actually one of my best-selling albums, At Night the Hell of the Moon. Um, another one of my favorites is Lubricate the Red, White, and Blue. She's a Grand Old Flag and uh, WD-40 uh, by Greg Keeler from Montana and came up with that uh, humorous little ditty that kind of celebrates that the uh, United States will go anywhere to uh, you know, drill for oil to lubricate the red, white, and blue. <laughs> oh, I'd go anywhere to fight for oil to lubricate the red, white, and blue. If you drive a big V8, it's time to celebrate. They're gonna fight a war for you. To keep gas prices cheap, so when you drive or when you sleep, you can do it in an air-conditioned room. For driving is your right, so let's get out there and fight. You can read that in the Constitution. I go anywhere to fight for oil, to lubricate the red, white, and blue. Uh, that's a great song. It's a great song. But you also uh, do do some serious uh, topics as well. Uh, your song, Panagonia Dam Song. Yes, that was an amazing gig. I was actually hired to go to southern Patagonia in uh, Chile and visit the site of these proposed uh, hydro hydroelectric dam dams and uh, just beautiful countryside uh, there were uh, gaucho cowboys and sheep herders riding their horses around and it's way out there and uh, these incredibly beautiful rivers would be dammed to make electricity to send 1,500 miles away and to Santiago and, and other places. And uh, it, it was an extremely corrupt thing. Uh, the former dictator, Pinochet of Chile, right when he was being forced from office, gave away the rights, uh, the water rights to those rivers to his uh, pals and corporations in Europe 
and basically he gave away public, uh, you know, public property to the private sector, and now they want to dam these and build the dams. But they haven't built them so far. The people of Chile, Chile have been standing up strongly, but that's what that song is about. Yeah, that's that's great that you do that. And those those protests are going on as we speak right now, I believe. Yes, yes, it, it continues on. Uh, it, it, it's surprising. I was very worried when the current uh, right wing government in Chile won, they were going to go right ahead with the dams. But the uh, the Chilean students and the people of Chile have stood up against it, and so far they have not been built. So we're, we're hoping uh, that we can keep those rivers free. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, you were recognized uh, for your music by the Sea Shepherd uh, Conservation Society, and currently you're on the Great Coal Train Tour. Could you tell us about about that? Uh, yes. Uh, well, way back when, I actually sailed on the Sea Shepherd. People might know the Sea Shepherd from the uh, uh, sh- television show Whale Wars on Animal Planet. And uh, currently, I am on what I'm calling the Great Coal Train Tour, and uh, it's been a fascinating tour. I'm, I'm Touring from uh, I'm touring the route of the proposed coal export train, and uh, if your listeners aren't familiar with that, uh, basically what uh, the Army Corps of Engineers and a bunch of big corporations, including Goldman Sachs and Peabody Coal and Warren Buffett, they're proposing to dig up hundreds of millions of tons of coal from eastern Montana and Wyoming, ship it by train all the way across Montana through all their cities, through Spokane down the Columbia River Gorge and then out through five ports in Washington and Oregon, uh, loading this coal onto coal super tankers, the largest ships in the world, and sending them to China, where it will burn this especially dirty coal to make electricity. The pollution will pollute the people of China. A lot of the pollution will come back, dump mercury in our lakes, and all that to create uh, more jobs in China. But other than that, I think it's a pretty good proposal. <laughs> Uh, this is one of the most, uh, you know, after the election last night, the first thing on my mind was uh, this: uh, th- these proposed uh, ports shipping out um, coal and having all those additional coal trains come through the area. So I really appreciate your work on that. You you did a um, you sent some photos out uh, from an alumni India ceremony uh, concerning coal trains, and my concern was the coal trains running along the Columbia River and Puget Sound, of course. But you brought up a, a really good point uh, just now: the, the super tankers going out through the sound and going out through the ocean. Th- that has its own detrimental effects, correct? Yes, yes, and uh, as you mentioned, the Lummi Indians who are located uh, right near Bellingham, Washington, they've come out against the coal export facility. Uh, they want to build, uh, it will be the largest coal export facility in North America, 1,400 acres, mountains of coal. They want to do this on um, where the Lummi have uh, ancient cemeteries and ceremonial grounds. Uh, but these coal super tankers pose a whole other risk. You know, of course, all of us along the train route, we're afraid of it for health reasons, coal dust and diesel particulates. Uh, we're afraid of it blocking access. Uh, just for our daily lives, not to mention ambulances and firefighters trying to get to emergencies. Uh, the coal super tankers pose a whole other danger. Uh, one, they carry a million gallons of bunker fuel, which is the dirtiest diesel made. One of those ships hits one of our precious San Juan Islands. We'll have a catastrophic oil spill that, that could destroy the habitat and the economy for the region. I mean, it's just crazy. The other thing, which is which I, I learned along this tour when I played my show on San Juan Island, is these uh, giant ships are extremely loud in the water. That affects the orcas. And uh, the orcas, when the water is quiet, can communicate to each other and to their children, you know, a few miles away. When these ships are going by, they can uh, only communicate about a quarter of a mile. It basically deafens them. And... If, the, if these projects go through, those ships with the tar sand ships coming out of the ports of Vancouver, British Columbia, 90% of the day, the whales won't be able to hear each other. You, you couple that with this coal port going in where there's a special herring uh, rookery, a place where the herring have their babies. That's the earliest herring run to come back. It's the earliest food for the salmon, the earliest food for the orca. You put that together with the noisy ships, it could drive the orcas out of the Puget Sound. It's like they are the symbol 
um, the pride of our region. And you put all this together, like my, my joke about it is, you know, well, what do we get out of this deal? And, you know, my country line uh, answer to that is they get the coal mine, we get the shaft. Exactly. And, you know, basically, it's really important. We're up against some of the largest corporations in the world. It's, it's really important for everyone to learn about the coal export trains and to tell their neighbors about it and to lean on their elected officials to make sure we stop it. And I was very happy yesterday when the mayor of Seattle came out strongly against the coal export train. And, and with cities, I've, I've driven all the way from eastern Montana following the route of the coal train, and I can tell you every city along the way is working to stop it. The Yakima Indian Nation, the Lummi Indian Nation have come out against it, and the city of Portland and the city of Seattle have come out against it. So... I think if we all work together, we, we can stop the coal export train. Well said. Well said. You are around Tacoma and Seattle coming up here real soon. Uh, you're going to be in Tacoma a couple nights, and you're going to be yeah. in Seattle, right? Yes, I'm uh, playing at uh, Pacific Lutheran University on Friday night and doing a workshop on uh, community organizing to stop the coal train there. Saturday night, I am also playing another show in Tacoma. I'm pulling that information up right here. That is at the uh, Manitou Center. Uh, both those shows start at 7 p.m. Uh, Pacific Lutheran University on Friday, the Manitou Center on Saturday there on South 66th Street in Tacoma. And then in Seattle, I have a show uh, on Sunday, November 11th at 1 p.m. at the Woodland Park Presbyterian Church, 1 p.m. in Seattle. And these are all related to the coal train issue. I'll be telling stories about the towns along the way and singing some songs and doing some comedy. And uh, all this information is at the calendar page at cowswithguns.com. Then the tour moves south to Portland or Goldendale. And I'll be, I'm, I'm playing all over the place. Uh, updates coming up in Everett and uh, Olympia and on and on. Great. So that, that calendar again can be found at www cowswithguns.com, right? That's it. Dana, thanks again for talking to Space Dog Radio. Is there anything you'd like to say to the planet? Anything at all, you can say it right now on Space Dog Radio. Wow. Uh, well, basically, I think, as many of your listeners realize, the, the planet is in rough shape, which means all the species on the planet are in rough shape. And uh, But we can... But, you know, the people around the world in every culture and every language, people in every community are working on small projects to make, to slowly build a truly sustainable culture. That work is happening. Um, you know, there are forces standing in the way of that, you know, anti-democratic forces, the oil companies, the fossil fuel companies. But if we all keep working to slowly make our neighborhoods and our towns and our states, et cetera, sustainable, we can build a beautiful, sustainable culture that respects the rights of all creatures, and, and it'll be a beautiful place for our children and grandchildren to grow up in. All right. Dana Lyons, this month's featured artist on Space Dog Radio. Thanks a lot, Dana. We appreciate it. Uh, keep up the good fight, and uh, we will catch you next orbit. Thanks so much. How I miss your dog. Oh, honey, how I miss your dog. I feel so blue. Too, but I really miss your dog When I would call She'd always come to me She shared my bed She'd always comfort me She was the best friend a man could ever But I really miss your dog You know I really miss your dog Come back to me and bring your dog